Nepal in 1992. From there, I, I helped to start a high school in my village. And from 1992 to 19, actually almost uh, 1999, I had to come down to Pohra, the nearest town to Pohra, to check my email once a month. I had to walk uh, about five, six hours down and then take a bus and uh, go to that town and uh, check my email and, and uh, go back to the village. I did that for seven, eight years. <laughs> doing like that way. Finally, I got tired and uh, I wanted to find ways to bring internet in the, in the village. But the problem was, my village was far from the city. We didn't have any telephone. To, to get connected to the uh, internet or to, to email services. And I, my background was not a computer. I was not a computer background. My background is education. I did not know anything about the technology uh, that uh, we could use. And I asked them if they know anybody around the world uh, who can help me to uh, bring internet uh, in, in, in a remote mountain villages. The first question they asked was, why do you need internet in the village? <laughs> and I told them the story. Uh, and uh, they published this uh, article, uh, online uh, news uh, about my village. And then we got volunteers from, from Europe. Yeah. First two volunteers, a uh, picture of this uh, village. You can see down there, the clusters, houses there. Uh, that's the village where I'm from. And on the top, top of that, you see some white patches there, and that is a uh, uh, state school. And on the background, you can see the Himalayas there. And this is the existing network, and I'm going to tell uh, in more detail about this uh, program later on. Uh, right now, there on the, on the uh, right corner, far end corner, you can see the um, the uh, places there, and, and my district is far away from there. So we had to connect from there to these uh, villages uh, through a relay station. Because from from the nearest city to the, the top of the mountain, there was a mountain, uh, 11,000 feet high mountain in between uh, Pohara and, and my village, and we had to go over that mountain. So we have to build a, a relay station. Now, uh, this is a little bit older one, uh, the, the the network photo. We have connected uh, 20 villages around there. And the, the town over there, that's the town that has the internet connection, ISP, internet service provider, that has telephone and that has hospital, everything there. Uh, so, this is uh, the imp implementing phases, uh, the pilot phase, or uh, we like to call it testing phase, actually. In 2002, after the uh, the BBC uh, article yeah, was for background, but they didn't know much about wireless networking. So after they came uh, to the village, uh, we, uh, you know, talk about how we can bring the internet, how, how we can connect the village with the with the wireless. And that time we didn't even have uh, the equipment. Uh, one of the volunteers he had brought two PCI card wireless PCI card to the village and uh, we played with it for a while and then later we asked some people uh, to donate uh, no, uh, wireless Wi-Fi uh, radios and uh, we got uh, some of them but the, the wireless radios that we got was the indoor, indoor uh, wireless uh, Wi-Fi radio. So that had uh, and in the manual that had 900 feet maximum of, of those range. But we were trying to find ways to connect the, that town in Pokhara that was about 40 kilometers far from the village uh, through our relay station. So when we talk about, about this uh, idea to the people, uh, especially this telecommunication engineers we know in, in, in uh, Europe and uh, in America and in, in Singapore, they said, no, this is not going to work. Because this is Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi would not go that far. That's why they were suggesting. Uh, but uh, we didn't give up actually. We um, we did uh, several testings and we used uh, several. Uh, we built uh, some 
uh, antennas uh, using different things there and uh, we also use uh, this uh, TV antenna uh, people use to get a satellite TV because we didn't have uh, uh, antennas, uh, good antennas. So using these antennas so we spent uh, two three months doing, doing several testings and finally uh, we decided to do this long range testing. And we use one of this cam uh, and, uh, and this uh, dish, I put one of this dish with that uh, small indoor radio, uh, and uh, one in Pokhara and one in on the top of that mountain up there. Hi. So, to our surprise, <coughs> and immediately, uh, immediately we put this radio, uh, this uh, dish on the ground and uh, connected it to the uh, to the radio and the thing to the to Pokhara, and within a, a few minutes, <coughs> a couple of minutes. We were connected to the to the to Pohara. so we were very uh, encouraged by that. And later we put this uh, dish on the top of the tree, and uh, then we started the project. And after that, it was not that difficult. Uh, then after the successful, Mark was undergoing the student to him, and he applied for a for a grant. I, I don't know, it's a research grant. Mm, for I mean that he was eligible for and. Uh, he applied for this ten thousand dollar grant and got that grant and uh, who, who were quite uh, you know, happy for that. And he bought uh, the equipments uh, that were needed. Actually, that time we also uh, this time we had a better uh, grid antenna and better radius uh, wi wi -fi radio. Then for the second phase uh, in two thousand five we got some grant. I actually that was a. Uh, uh, competition we won from the World Bank called Development Marketplace. In 2005, uh, there was $20,000 grant and uh, we won that grant and uh, used uh, that money to buy more equipment and uh, connected, uh, uh, that time we connected 13 villages. Uh, that, uh, that was how uh, this project, this uh, our uh, project got uh, publicity around the world uh, through the villages. In, in three districts of Nepal, uh, Baski, Parbat, and uh, and Magdi districts, and uh, it takes in order to go around all these villages, it takes at least eight days for me uh, to go around, and that's how we measure the distance in Nepal uh, because we don't have any roads there, so we have to walk uh, to visit all these areas. Uh, to total population of 22,000. And we have several schools connected to the network as well. Uh, I would like to show some of the pictures of these uh, uh, villages that are connected in the network. This is the, you can see there, there you can see some white patches there, that is the school. That's why I, I mean I started working first uh, as, a, as a volunteer and I have that uh, to start a high school there. Oh, One village, yeah. but some villages providing some services. Uh, to the to the villages there. But first is communication. Uh, like I said, this all these areas, all these 20 villages, they don't have any coverage of uh, mobile. There is no telephone. Uh, and many of these villages, they don't even have post office there. So we are using this network for communication purpose. Using this uh, VOIP for uh, local VOIP. And also we have connected uh, our network to the telephone line of the Nepal Telephone Company. Uh, right now we have uh, five uh, telephone lines connected to our PBX server uh, in, in Pokhara. Uh, and uh, the villagers are, all these 20 villages are using these five telephone lines and the, 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 those lines are always busy. And we are using this uh, Network, uh, and we have this bulletin board where people can post their messages and announcement uh, in the local news. So we are using that way. And another thing is education. Uh, we are actually one of our uh, main goal is to use the, uh, this uh, network for education and health purpose. Because the reason uh, the reason is because uh, most of these mountain villages they have. Uh, schools there, some schools, high schools, uh, middle schools, but uh, those are uh, government schools and uh, the government always don't provide enough teachers uh, to to the schools. There are always shortage of teachers, there are not, uh, I mean the teachers who are there are most of them are not qualified.